Thank you for tuning in to Hacks and Hobbies with your host, Junaid. In season two of Hacks and Hobbies, we're visited by our amazing guests coming from all walks of life who want to learn their story, their struggles, and their journey on how they got to where they are today. So stick around. In this episode, I get to speak with Bonnie Marie Williams. She's a voice actor at VO Superhero. She is the ultimate superhero and voiceover superhero. And she's got an amazing journey that we're about to learn about. She's got a bachelor's degree in theater arts and acting concentration. And she's into a lot of cool things that I wish I had the opportunity to get into, but we all know about my addiction to different hobbies, <laughs> but let's learn more about Bonnie Marie Williams. Hey, Bonnie, thank you so much for taking the time and coming on to the podcast. Hey, thanks so much for having me. I'm excited. You're welcome. You're welcome. So, Bonnie, it almost seems like we've just met, but it also seems like that I've known you for a very long time. I absolutely love your passion for superhero and and using the superhero terminology in your branding of your voiceover acting um if you wanted to know my screen name or my handle all over the internet is super janade Mm -hmm. that's why i was like okay we're gonna get along just fine (laughs) (laughs) and i am i'm absolutely passionate about superhero fandom and on all that good stuff and and um following the journeys of so many superheroes and, and movies and whatnot and when I saw that you're a voiceover superhero, because I love, like, I would totally love to get into doing voiceovers for things. And I didn't know about myself, this about myself, but over time, I've learned to appreciate the power of the voice. Mm-hmm. Like, long time ago, when I first spoke to, on, on the microphone, I sounded so weird. I was like, who is this guy? It doesn't sound like me at all. Mm-hmm. And And now... I love. I just love talking to people and I, and and hearing myself. And uh, I've gotten a ton of compliments about you know that you've got a voice for radio. And I was like, really? Thank you. <laughs> That's very nice of you. So tell me your journey. And and if anybody was visiting Marie Marie Williams' LinkedIn profile, then they know exactly what's going on. But I want to hear it from the from the source. Bonnie, tell us your story, your journey. Sure. So I had family that was, or family friends, but they were considered family that were in the business. So I've always kind of been adjacent Mm -hmm. to showbiz, but I never really thought that I was going to actively do it until I was a teenager. So when I was little, I really wanted to be an astronaut because I was raised with superheroes and comic books and also musical theater and the space program. So it's an interesting sort of combination (laughs) to be raised on. So I think I could, I, I would say probably some of my first words were some of the early astronauts in the program. So, you know, or who are these X-Men? And like, I could name them off of a poster that I had in my bedroom. And it was the X-Men from the eighties when they had Mohawks and stuff. It was super Mm. cool. So I'm dating myself here, but, uh, so I wanted to do that. And then, you know, I was told I had to be better with math and science and you know, that there are some risks to going into space. And I thought, okay, that's not for me. I'm, I'm, Math has never been my strength, and I'm also getting older and getting motion sickness. So mm-hmm. maybe, you know, maybe it worked out that I didn't want to be an astronaut. I don't think I could have survived some of the tests that they have to go through. So, mm-hmm. but now I can play one. So that's that's nice. a cool thing. So wanted to do that, and then I didn't. And then I thought, said I was going to go into the FBI. Like, okay, I'm going to do this. You know, I would be lying if I said that Dana Scully from the X-Files didn't have at least a little influence in that, but also Sandra Bullock and Miss Congeniality. (laughs) Um, Underrated movie, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And, you know, then I realized some of the, as I was looking more into it, that it was going to be a little bit heavy psychologically, depending on what you were going to be working on. And I said, okay, I don't think I can sleep at night working on some of those cases. So... 
I said, okay, well, you know, I was always involved in theater. I was always writing my own plays. And one of my daycare teachers probably thought they were the worst things ever, but she still said she would direct them. And it, she just was always so encouraging with it. She was never like, that's dumb, get a different dream. You know, she's like, okay, you have a ton of energy. Let's go ahead and put this into good use. So I was yeah. always like planning musicals and planning this play and writing this and doing this. And, and so I kind of carried that with me into high school. So I took an acting class in high school and I was doing some of the scenic work backstage. And I, I kind of lost my confidence when I was around 14 or so because you know it, it it's puberty and adolescence and you're starting yeah. high school and you know if you already don't feel like you fit in anyways which I mm -hmm. think is kind of a universal theme like nobody mm -hmm. really feels like they fit in yeah. so you know I was doing some of the backstage work I was doing scenic painting crew work and then I had talked to my acting teacher and I said hey like you know because she asked me why aren't you auditioning I said I don't think I'm good enough and she mm -hmm. said no Bonnie you are good enough. I want to see you at auditions for our play in the fall. Yeah. And so I did. And then I got a speaking part and it was really cool. And it kind of gave me my groove back in a way. And so nice. I started doing that. And then I would say by the time I was 16, I was set. I said, no, I'm going to be an actor and I'll do, you know, I'll do the hard work and I'll do it to get there. And I'd always wanted to be involved in the arts somehow. Yeah. And, and I knew that was where my future was going to be. And I say this with love, you know, there are people who have your best intentions at heart, but they still want you to try to be realistic. They'll mm -hmm. say, well, you know, you can't make it as an actor. And I say that out of love. So what if you go into this instead? What if you do yeah. this instead where you're like, okay, mm -hmm. I know you mean well for me. I understand you're saying these things out of love, but I know that this is the right thing for me to do. Yeah. So you have to keep listening to that inner dialogue. And I've talked okay. myself in and out of it so many times. So I went to college to become a theater major. And I said, okay, when I'm done with college, I'm going to go to New York and I'm going to be on Broadway and, <laughs> you know, I'm going to be in Beauty and the Beast and I'm going to be in Wicked and, yeah. and all these dreams that I had. And I had my a friend of mine in the theater department was working at the college radio station. She said, Hey, you know, do you want to do a commercial with us? I said, sure. What, what do I have to do? She said, well, it's for one of the local Mexican restaurants. You just have to act like you like Mexican food. And I said, it's not even acting. <laughs> like, sure. That, that'll be really hard. But that was my first time behind the microphone. And I thought it was really cool, but I didn't think anything of it with the way that things were going. I was like, okay, I'm going to graduate and I'm going to go. And then, you know, I had some family things come up that kept me a little bit closer to home. So I said, okay, I'm going to, you know, move into the city proper on my own and I'm going to do that. And I'm really going to give it my all. And I was doing, you know, TV and film. I was doing some cool stuff, but it didn't give me that feeling that I had when I was an undergrad doing Shakespeare or doing musicals. And I was trying to find that feeling again. Yeah. And I went from different day jobs, one to the other. And eventually I ended up at a PR firm, which was really cool. It was very different. And there were celebrities coming in all the time, but you had to be cool. So you have to just treat people like they're normal, not like they're celebrities. <laughs> and, you know, it was a cool job. But then that job ended and I was going through some really rough, like personal things. And I thought, what the heck do I do now? Yeah. And a friend of mine who just kills it in voiceover, she said, hey, and I met her doing theater. She said, hey, I think you'd be really good at it. Do you want to come into my booth and give it a try? I said, okay, like I'll try anything once. Mm -hmm. And just having her throw things at me and improvising behind the mic and doing these different things, I had so much fun with it. Yeah. And it reminded me of that feeling that I had when I was pursuing theater as an undergrad. And I mm -hmm. said, wow, I have to pursue that, like that feeling. Yeah. It, it's when you know and it clicks. I said, okay, this is what I need to be doing. Like I kind of kicked myself for not getting into it earlier, but mm -hmm. I didn't know that people could, I didn't know it was a job. I didn't yeah. know it was a form of acting. And it, like, it, it's one of those things that wasn't really talked about a lot. Like you would see, you know, behind the scenes features on Aladdin and it would be Robin Williams, but you mm -hmm. don't think that it's maybe not a celebrity doing yeah. it. So yeah. 
yeah, so that's when I got started with that and life, you know, took me on some twists and turns and now I'm out here in North Carolina and I'm doing it full time. So I never would have thought, you know, as a 16 year old sophomore in high school that who wanted to be on Broadway that I would be doing voiceovers now, but there's yeah. nothing else that I would want to be doing again, you know? That's so cool. That's uh that's an amazing journey. Um but I see a lot of points where, you know, you, you made the decision and you're mentioning, you know, how a lot of people have quote unquote, their best interest about what you should be doing. Yeah. And, um, I think one of the reasons is because, um, they know that you're going to change or you're going to be doing something that they won't have access to you. Yeah. And you're going to be a different person or you're going to, you know, you're going to have different people that you're going to be hanging out with and they don't want to lose you. Mm -hmm. And, and it's really interesting because I, I hear that a lot. Right. And anybody you talk to who's pursued their passion, you know, has, has had that exact same conversation about, no, 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 you shouldn't be doing that. You should be doing this because there's a lot of money here. There's a lot of blah, blah, blah. It's steady. It's secure. It's, yes. you know, it's a normal thing that, you yeah. know, it's like if you're experiencing any sort of difficulty, especially mm -hmm. when you're a creative entrepreneur, like there's yeah. going to be difficulties. But yeah. anytime you might vent and just say, oh my gosh, this is so hard. Yeah. And they'll say, well, you know, what if you just go into this instead? What if you yeah. do this instead? Like, I don't want to do that instead. <laughs> like, exactly. My heart wouldn't be in it. And I've been mm -hmm. in jobs where my heart wasn't in it. And yeah. I could tell because I would just come home all the time exhausted mm -hmm. because you're putting in all that energy for something that doesn't make you happy. Exactly. It's, it's almost like telling a child who's been crawling for, you know, past year or past six months or whatever. I don't, I don't know when kids, um, I didn't tr keep track of when my child started crawling, but you're telling them, don't try to walk. It's too, too hard for you. Keep falling down. <laughs> yeah. Just, just don't bother trying to walk. Don't, it's just hard. don't bother. Just crawl. You get, I don't want to see you get hurt anymore. I don't want to see you <laughs> trying. I don't want to see you struggling. So just, you know, and people mean well, but I think yeah. there is also that sense of, of a loss of control. Like you mm -hmm. said, and I mean, I've had people trying to talk me out of it forever. And there have been some where it was out of love and others where it was out of whatever it was with them telling me I wasn't good enough. And let me tell you, somebody telling you that you are not good enough is one of the biggest motivators if you can turn it into that. Yes. I had an ex-boyfriend, like I loved him dearly. And he told me that, and he denied it later, of course, <laughs> but he told me that he didn't think that I was good enough and that I wasn't what LA wanted. Oh man. Because he was trying to control me. Mm -hmm. And you know, now when you're doing really well in what you want to do, yeah. like his voice was in my head when I got cast in my first play inside mm -hmm. of the city. Yeah. And it was like, yeah, you're telling me I'm not good enough. Well, I'm doing it. <laughs> it's one of the best, like one of the best feelings is when you do, what other people said you couldn't do. Yes. That's, it's a good motivator. It's a, it's a great motivator. You're absolutely right. One of my friends, Michael Lyons, he said, you have to just go and do it. Yep. And that little voice in your head, pay attention and put in motion things that's eventually going to get you there. And what's really interesting is I learned about meetups a lot later in life. Like all my experience was through either working with in companies and, and learning about what people did or having a lot of family. Like we had a ton of family growing up in California. But then I learned about Meetup and I was like, what? There's people that are talking about this stuff, like photography. I was absolutely, you know, so I, I met these, met people that are also doing photography. So going, like I opened myself to learn more and I made those connections and, and got more out of like photography and filmmaking mm -hmm. and like going out and meeting people who are already doing what you want to do is the best way. Like a lot of people that are telling us, Oh, the best thing for you to do is this is because that's all they know. Right. Yep. Yep. And, the one question that's always on my back of my mind and I don't want to ask them because it's rude. It's like, have you done it before? <laughs> yeah. 
Exactly. <laughs> Have you done what I want to do? No. Well, what, well, then how do you know that that's the best advice for me? Yeah, totally. You being able to see that it can be done, like mm -hmm. you said, is like, well, they're doing it. Why can't I do it? Yeah. You know, they've put in the work. Why can't it be me? Exactly. You know, it, it's so just a few months ago, kind of late summer, early fall last year, I kind of mm -hmm. lost my groove a little bit because mm -hmm. I was working a day job that had me working some pretty crazy hours and like getting ready for the wedding and doing all sorts of things. And I was feeling kind of emotionally vulnerable. Yeah. And I had an experience that just deflated me. Like I was ready to quit. I was so mm. deflated. I was just tired. You know, there was so much going on Yeah. and I was just feeling so defeated. And then I talked to a friend of mine who I've looked up to her for a long time since I started doing voiceover mm -hmm. and she became a friend of mine just through life circumstances and yeah. also one of my coaches and like hanging out with her and just like she helped me kind of get my mojo back, you know, mm -hmm. and like I told her, I said, you don't even know like how much it means to me, like being around you and being seeing that you're doing it. And she said, you know, sometimes you just need to see that it can be done. And then mm -hmm. after that, it's like everything just picked up. Like I hit bottom, but bounced mm. back. It's been going well ever since. So it's that, you know, you just have to see that somebody's doing it. If somebody else is doing it, yeah. especially if they're coming from worse circumstances than you, mm -hmm. why can't you do it? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's like all, every mind is exactly, has the same capacity to learn and execute. So if somebody can do it, then obviously I can too. Exactly. Yeah. I love it. I love it. And that's, that's what brought me onto, you know, being a podcaster. I'd been wanting to start a podcast since 2012. And myself and two of my cousins, we actually started a podcast too. We ended up with four episodes, but being in different time zones. They were in LA. I was in Colorado. Being in different time zones, not finding the right time to, to record the episode it just got harder. But then last year, I made up my mind. I said, I have to do this. Nobody else is going to do this for me or come out and be like, all right, let's do it. This is what you wanted to do. I'm here. Mm -hmm. let's get started. Nobody's going to do that. Nope. Do it on my own. And luckily around that time, a friend of mine came up to me and he said, you know, I want to start a podcast. What do I need to do? So I started doing my research all over again. I, I ran into Anchor and I was like, oh my God, I can do a podcast directly on my iPhone. I don't need all this extra gear. I can just start, you know, I can just start just right now. Start. Yeah. And then that's the thing, right? Nike said it 20, 30 years ago, just do it. You're going to figure out the problems. You're going to solve them. You just got to start moving, taking that first step. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did. And I was like, a year later, I'm still doing it because I love it. It gives me so much fulfillment when I learn the stories of my professionals like yourself and people who are going after their dreams and, and making their superpowers into what they do as an everyday thing. I just, mm -hmm. I just love those journeys and those stories. Absolutely. And yeah. The other thing that also triggered is last year I turned 42 and I was like, 42 is the ultimate answer. It is. That <laughs> right? it is. <laughs> <laughs> like I have to do it. It has to be this year. And I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I've got the podcast, I've, I'm a published author in, in one book and working on another book and then working on my own book eventually, working on a, a video course on um, how to use your smartphone for video production. So oh, that's I got awesome. a lot of things going. Yeah, I got a lot of things going. And, and oh, I, I also love acting and I, did, I um, signed up on this app called Backstage Mm -hmm. They were looking for baby boomers to star in this um, Kaiser Permanente ad. <laughs> so I put in my uh, audition request and, and they were like, come on down. <laughs> and I got to be in this commercial to be, uh, to be an actor or somebody who, who's hurt their knees and they're at the hospital. Mm -hmm. So that was, that was pretty fun, you know, getting makeup or like anti-shine stuff put on your face so your face doesn't shine with all these lights. It was a pretty cool experience. And I, I want to do more of that. And I just haven't, um, being so busy with so many things, I haven't 
had a chance or been picked up yet again for more work. Mm -hmm. But I know there's a lot more avenues that I can go after if I did want to do more with acting. and Exactly. And backstage is a good way to go. Like mm -hmm. that's, that's where you go for a lot of the, the bigger casting calls. And yeah. I mean, that's one of the things that you do when you yeah. want to be an actor is you pick up backstage because you get all yeah. the articles, you get all the casting calls, mm -hmm. you know, that, that was a great way to go. And it's yeah. the fact that you said, okay, I'm going to, I want to do this. So I'm mm -hmm. going to do it and I'm yeah. going to put it out there. Cause like you said, yeah. it's not going to come to you if you just keep thinking like, okay, exactly. I'm here. You know, you have to make an investment. Exactly. Of your time, your everything. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and um, so today I took a lift to come back home after I dropped my car off and I was talking to the lift driver and he was like, I'm searching for an IP, an intellectual property mm -hmm. that an idea that's, you know, that I can monetize on. So then I asked him, are you documenting whatever ideas are in your head? He's like, no, whenever I search an idea, there's already somebody doing it. I was like, well, that didn't stop Walmart from coming up and, you know, nope. taking over Kmart's business. That didn't stop Target to continue to be a grocery store. Or they didn't stop Lyft from starting their own thing, even though Uber was around. There's like tens of different companies doing the same thing. You just have to get out there and make your mark, you know, document it, put all those ideas from your head onto paper so then you can have a a look at it from another perspective. Exactly. Because yeah. I think people get afraid of doing that because then it's out there. Yes. You know, then they're facing it and then the fear takes over, you know? So it's that, well, if I keep it in my head, <laughs> nobody else is going to see it. Nobody else is going to make fun of me. Yeah. I don't have to act on it. Mm -hmm. But I want to do it. But that fear takes over. Yes, absolutely. And, and fear is good in some areas. But then fear of being a failure and not doing it is as well as a failure in itself. Mm -hmm. Really good point. See, I love this conversation. It's, it's, it's opening up my mind in a way that it's already open, but it's like we're on the, we're on the same wavelength. Totally. Like gone through the same journey of facing the people and then putting those ideas on table and on the, on the paper. And here's the thing, right? You got to spend more time on that discovery, on that pre-production of what you're planning on getting out there. Totally. Yeah. It, everything is going to take longer than you think it will. Mm -hmm. Everything takes longer than you think it will. You're not going to be an overnight success. Yeah. You're planning. You just have to get it out there. You have yeah. to start putting the steps in place. It, yeah. There's no other way around it. But my website took me longer than I thought it would. Mm-hmm but I had to, I knew what I wanted. I just didn't know how to articulate it. So it was trial and error. It yeah. was so many different drafts of graphics and colors. And then finally, when it clicked and I got what I wanted, I said, okay, it only took me 40 tries, but I had to start putting it out there and I had to start putting things down so I could see it. And I could say, that's it. That's not it. Keep that, scratch that, you know, but you have to start putting the pen to the paper and really trying to articulate what it is that you want, what it is that you're trying to create. Exactly. That's so right. Cool. So I've had a website for my company for the longest time. And I had, um, I think I put it up in 2004. And then I hadn't updated the website in a long, very long time. And I was like, well, that doesn't represent me anymore. And then I just shut it down because, well, I need to work on what working on those drafts and you said it took 40 tries for you just it felt like, like 40 <laughs> felt like 40 right just like it took Thomas Alva Edison so many tries before he could come up with the light bulb yeah right and a big part of it was yeah it was having to rebrand myself as a voiceover talent and not just theater and stage and so yeah. it was doing that whole journey of like Reading a book on branding by mm -hmm. Celia Siegel. I highly recommend it for creatives, but especially for voice actors. Mm -hmm. I'm not getting paid to say that. I just really enjoyed that book. And it was so eye-opening because it it kind of reaffirmed everything that I knew I wanted to present. But I kind mm -hmm. sometimes you need to hear somebody else say it. You go, oh, okay, yes. 
That is right. Like when somebody else says exactly what you're thinking, you're like, okay, Mm -hmm. I just needed to hear it from somebody else. Make sure I'm not crazy that this is what I want to do. But it was, you know, the rebranding process and Mm -hmm. making sure everything was cohesive, but it it takes time, you know, and sometimes you have to burn it all down and rebuild. You have to scratch everything and start again from the bottom on a new foundation. Yeah. And it's a little scary to think, oh my gosh, I have to start all over. But Mm -hmm. then if you look at it on the flip side, it's like, wow, I get to start all over and create something entirely new. Yeah. Something that can be amazing. And there's no limits to what I can create now because I don't have anything holding me back. Absolutely. And man, I attended VIP film, sum- film and TV summit a couple of weeks ago. And John Lee, he's a, he's a producer and He's saying that a lot of these TV shows and movies, the script has gone through at least 60 to 70 drafts before it's even, you know, considered finished. Mm-hmm. And I was like, wow, that's, <laughs> that's insane. It's insane. Yeah. Right? Because you've got you've to gotta take it from all the filters and clean it up to get that point across and um, listening to the story of um, Pixar and Toy Story, when they took the first draft to Disney, Woody was a very, very cynical person, very mean person. (laughs) And then they were like, all right, we're going to go back and tone that a ton down. And then it would still get that little glimpse of meanness, right? In the movie. But then it's, it's just, so well balanced mm-hmm. that Toy Story just took over hearts and minds of like everybody that watched that movie. Exactly. And um, but we we have to start. That's the key point here. You've got to start if you want to do what you love to do and get it out there. Man, mm-hmm. love it. Cool. It seems like we've been talking forever, but it hasn't even passed that much time. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I think it's a good thing. Yeah. Okay, good. I'm not crazy. No, no, no. All right. So some question that I usually ask my guests is... Totally. And they open up more portal doors for sure. What is one hobby that you wish you got into? I feel like I've tried a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. And I I like trying different things. I don't like to limit myself. So Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to answer this. I really wish I understood what the heck my husband talks about with his work. Like Mm -hmm. he does a lot of tech stuff and I I wish I had more of an understanding on that side of things. So Mm -hmm. I guess I would say like follow him around for a day at work and say, (laughs) okay, I want to be able to understand what it is you're talking about. So I think he had said, oh, you know, if you knew how to do this, we would be able to hire you for it. But I don't know how to do any of that. So. I think that would be really cool is to go follow him and some of the other guys mm-hmm. at work and just say, okay, like I'm going to try to learn this. But I yeah. think, I honestly think my brain would explode. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think your brain will explode. Our brain creates 1,400 new cells or um, neurons every day. So you can dedicate them to learn that. I mean, I'm just saying. <laughs> I could, but I don't um, think it would be a research. hobby at that point. No, no, it's not a hobby anymore then. Yeah, it would be, it would be, I don't know. I think then I would become a little competitive and like, oh, I'm going to do this better than you. And like, we, <laughs> you know, cause I'm, I am a little, I'm slightly competitive by nature, but I'm the most competitive against mm-hmm. myself. Okay. Except when he and I play board games, it's, okay. you know, it's game on. So we're both <laughs> fairly competitive at that point. Like I don't let him win. So sure. <laughs> yeah. So I think maybe, maybe some of that, maybe more of the tech side of things. Mm-hmm. Like I used to build websites for fun when I was mm-hmm. little. And then as I got more into theater, I stopped doing that as much. Sure. And now it's like, oh, I, when I was making my website, I kept thinking to myself, man, if I had just kept this up as a hobby, <laughs> it would be so much easier, Yeah, <laughs> you know, and I was trying to build it. And he said, you know, but you said you used to build websites when you were younger. I said, yeah, but not with WordPress. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I was like hand typing HTML code like this is different. So I think I it would have benefited me to keep that up. But, you know, I didn't know back then that the Internet was going to be the crazy thing we have now. And 
you know, so I, I try to show myself a little grace with that and, and nice. try to maintain something with that. But we'll say that's my answer. Nice. Perfect. I love it. All right. Next one. What is your favorite? And this is my favorite question. What is your favorite movie or TV show? So I will answer both. Favorite movie, Beauty and the Beast, but not the live action one. The animated, animated. one from... Yeah. And it was really cool because Paige O'Hara, who played Belle, mm -hmm. came to Raleigh Supercon last summer. And yes. I said, if I'm going to meet anybody, it's her. Yeah, it's her. And I was so like, I was shaking. I don't know if I've ever, you know, <laughs> fangirled that hard for anybody before. But I was like, don't cry, don't cry, don't cry, don't be that. Like, I've met Carrie Fisher, yeah. and I was like, I, I didn't cry in front of her. <laughs> but I completely cried in front of Paige O'Hara. And she was the nicest person. And it was just an amazing experience because I said, you know, you were my favorite Disney princess. Like, that's mm -hmm. the first movie I ever remember going to see at the movie theaters. And so cool. it just left such an effect on me because contrary to my pictures, mm -hmm. I'm not a natural blonde. I, I'm a brunette <laughs> and seeing yeah. Belle up there, like I learned how to read at an early age. And mm -hmm. so it was seeing this beautiful, intelligent, strong, brave woman who yeah. had a beautiful voice to go with it mm -hmm. and who cared about her family. And she wasn't willing to conform to society standards and seeing yeah. that as a little girl was like wow that could be me like yeah. I had never identified with a character like that so you know getting to meet her and, and telling her like you not only are you one of my voice acting heroes but you're also one of my musical theater heroes it was a really cool experience and they always say like never meet your heroes but I think yeah. they lied because <laughs> they do she lie. was the nicest and she's like oh my gosh oh. you have such a nice smile oh my gosh I love you and I was like so cool. she told me she loves me <laughs> <laughs> it was it was really cool and so That's I have so cool. the autograph from her in my office and it's mm -hmm. one of the first things I see when I go in to my to my studio to record yeah. so that's my favorite movie for many, many reasons, which I won't go into. And nice. <laughs> that's kind of the background on that. But yeah. my favorite TV show, hands down, all time, is Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Oh, my God. I grew up watching that show. Yeah, same, yeah. same. And oh it just God. left such an effect on me. And like I collect Buffy merch. Like I'm like it just it got me through so much growing up in like a difficult time growing up. Yeah. And still got me through some really difficult moments mm -hmm. as an adult. And the writing on it is brilliant and the character arcs and I just love everybody's character arcs from seasons one through seven. And mm -hmm. you know, I definitely relate to Buffy in way too many ways. And <laughs> I don't think it's a bad thing. Like they no. show that she's not a perfect person. And that's what I really like is like, look, just because she's the chosen one doesn't mean she doesn't have issues. Exactly. You know, but everybody's redemption arcs and the way that they grow is just, oh, it's just so good. And I actually told my husband, I said, you're going to watch all of this, <laughs> all of Buffy with me before we get married. <laughs> and he laughed and I said, oh, you think I'm kidding? <laughs> and that was like a prerequisite. It was like, and you watched watch it? He did. And then he began to really, really enjoy it. And we were yeah. watching it. And he said, yeah, I can see how the ways that you identify with her. And mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, it makes more sense out of me, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it explains a few things about how I operate. But yeah. it's, it's my favorite. I <laughs> feel like it's just such a good show the metaphors, just everything. Mm -hmm. It you know, it still holds up pretty well. Um, some of the the nineties references. Yeah. But it's just so good. It's so good and it's so empowering. And, you know, when it ended, I cried. I was yeah. just I remember sitting in front of my TV, staring up at it in my bedroom back home and just like crying. I was like, oh, what do I do with my life? <laughs> That's so cool. So my uh, fun fact. When I first moved to the United States, um, Buffy the Vampire Slayer was the first show that I watched on a weekly basis. Oh my gosh, that is incredible. Because uh, growing up in Saudi, uh, we didn't really have regular television. We, we watched, um, we used to get Full House and Knight Rider, but... But Buffy the Vampire Slayer, you know, I'm actually following through the story. And it's mainly because um, I lived with my cousin, my girl cousins, and they loved watching that show. Among other shows that they would watch that I didn't approve of, like Seventh Heaven and, and 
and the, the other soaps. The WB uh, shows, yeah. The WB shows, right? WB 90 shows, man. Oh that was the God. place to be. That was the yeah. place to be, yeah. So Buffy the Vampire Slayer was like, all right, it's got action. It's got vampires. I'm totally down and watching this. Yeah, it was just so good. And it. I love that it turned the the typical you know oh no this girl's gonna walk into an alley and these mm-hmm. vampires are there and then no 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 it's mm-hmm. not what you think it is because she's gonna kick their butts you know yeah. and like ah it's just so good that and Buffy brings people together I've made mm-hmm. friends because of Buffy they're like <laughs> you like Buffy I like Buffy I said okay yes. well now we're friends <laughs> now we're friends forever it's true though so <laughs> it is very true absolutely and I am jealous that you got to meet Carrie Fisher. I mean, I, I got into Star Wars one after I moved here, but I didn't, you know, I didn't watch the original ones when they first came out, even though I was really young. But um, that's really cool that you got to meet her. And, you know, tell me a little bit about that. Absolutely. You- Anytime somebody wants me to tell them, I do, because it was <laughs> one of the best days ever. Like, you know, my wedding's up there, but like Carrie Fisher meeting her and Mark <laughs> Hamill, like, it definitely gives it a run for its money. So mm-hmm. this was. 2015 at mm-hmm. the Star Wars celebration in Southern California. So they mm-hmm. have Star Wars conventions throughout the country. And I think they have one in California and one in Chicago. So this was the California one because it was like an hour away from me. So I said, yeah. of course I'm going to go because mm-hmm. I had always wanted to meet her. Like Carrie Fisher has been and still is one of my heroes since I was little. Like I just love how she says, look, you can have issues, but you can't let them keep you down. Like try to find the humor in the things that suck. And I think that that's really powerful. It's a very powerful statement of, you know, reclaiming your power and saying, okay, just because I have this, that doesn't mean it has me. Yeah. I think it's just very motivating and she's hilarious and intelligent and just nuts. So I saw that she was going to be at the celebration so i said yeah i'm going so Mm -hmm. got my ticket got an autograph ticket and i saw that they had a photo op with her and mark hamill and i said okay like this is my birthday present to myself like this does not happen very often but i'm gonna give her the majority of my money but i still want to be able to do this skywalker twins photo op like (laughs) this is something i can show my kids one day so so waited in line to meet her And she was a few hours late, but I said, that's fine. Like, I'm Mm -hmm. sitting here. I'm not going. Like, I'm here to see her primarily. This is who I'm here to see. And I went with a couple friends of mine, you know, as we're getting up to the front, I'm kind of starting to do like the hand shaky, like the, what do I say to her? Because everybody's (laughs) coming up here going, Princess Leia, I love you. Like, she doesn't want to hear that. So what do I say? What do I say? And I had that inner monologue going and I get up to the front and she just looks at me and says, hey, how's it going? And I went. Uh, I don't know what to say to you that nobody else has said before. And, I, oh, and she just looked up and went, well, that's a good place to start. <laughs> and I was just like, oh, my God. Okay, I think I amused her. So, And she had her dog next to her. And so she's signing my autograph. And she says, oh, this is my dog, Gary. And I'm like, hi, Gary. And he's just, you know, super cute. And his tongue sticking out of his mouth. And he's yeah. just the cutest. And I had read an article about how she would sprinkle glitter on people at conventions. And mm-hmm. so I said, okay, this is your chance. Like, ask her now. Mm-hmm. And I said, hey, so I've heard that you sprinkle glitter on people. Like, if you have some, would you mind? She says, oh, yeah, let me look in my bag. I probably have some in here. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm just like waiting there. And my friend is looking at me next to me. And she's like, I want glitter too. And I said, Sarah, this is my moment. You wait. <laughs> so and of course she finds some. She's like, "Okay, bring me your head. Come here." And so she sprinkles some on my head, and my friend is like, "Me too, me too." So she's sprinkling purple glitter on our heads, and I was just like, "Thank you so much. I love you." And I walked away, and I was like, "I didn't cry in front of Carrie Fisher." And then as soon as my back was turned, I started bawling as I'm oh. walking away because it was just like one of the best moments ever. So I waited for my friend to get out of line and we took a selfie with the glitter in our hair and we're like, Carrie Fisher sprinkled us with glitter. Today is the best day ever. (laughs) It was just a cool story. And she was just super cool. And like, it's just one of those, like I said, they always say like, don't meet your heroes, but the ones that I've met, they've all Mm -hmm. been nothing but amazing. So it was just one of the coolest stories. And Mm -hmm. then we took a photo with Carrie and Mark Hamill later. And I swear his eyes looked right through me. It was like, not in a bad way, but like, 
I don't know. He has really pretty eyes and I yeah. didn't, I don't know, but he just like looked at me and it's like, he could see my soul. I don't know oh how God. to describe <laughs> it other than that, but we took a photo with them and it was like 10 seconds and it was just, it was a great way to end the day. So nice. my thing is, is, you know, people say, is it worth it to go meet this person and pay the money? I said, honestly, like if they mean that much to you, mm -hmm. you absolutely should do it. Exactly. Because had I not done it, you know, she passed a year and a half later. Yeah. Had I not done it, I would have regretted it. Exactly. But now I've got her stuff. I have like a little Princess Leia shelf in my office. It's Princess yeah. Leia and Carrie Fisher stuff in my office. But like Very cool. the photo from her is up there. The photo of us with the Skywalker twins is up mm -hmm. there. And it's all, you know, those are memories that I have to treasure. That's awesome. I love it. Yeah. So that takes us to a very poignant question. Who okay. is your favorite superhero? I know. And it's just, <laughs> I would have to say if I had to, we're going to just, we're going to just talk comics because like, don't try to pin up. Only on comics. <laughs> yeah, I know. But I'm like, Buffy Summers is a superhero, but I can't, ah, uh, <laughs> it's like choosing a favorite child. I don't want to do that. Um, so I would say out of all the comics, out of all comic book characters, I have to go with Barbara Gordon's Batgirl. Nice. Yeah. Like as much as like, I love Bruce Wayne. We got the same initials, which I didn't yeah. even realize until <laughs> like a year ago. I was like, BW, wait a minute. <laughs> um, Barbara Gordon, ever since the Batman TV show mm -hmm. when I was a kid. And I mean like the Adam West with Barbara Gordon. Mm -hmm. Like ever since then, because I grew up you know, watching that too. And yeah. she's always been very much like, I am my own person and Batman, you can't tell me what to do. I really like that in the character yes. where she says, you know, just because like you think you own the bat symbol, but you don't like, mm -hmm. I'm going to do this because I want to. And she's so smart and yeah. she can kick butt. And I've just always really liked that about her. And again, like, you know, in some of the things that happen to her in the comics, when you have a character that's been through some really hard things yeah. and they're able to turn it around and find strength in it. I really, like, that's like an underlying theme with characters that I really like. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she went through some really traumatic events, but was like, okay, I'm not going to let these things stop me. And I'm still yeah. going to find a way to serve others and to do good, but I'm going to have to do it on these terms and do it on my terms. And nice. I just think, She's just the greatest and she's very underrated. And I really just want a live action Batgirl movie. Like, can we make this happen, please? <laughs> well, you know, they represented Barbara Gordon really nicely in the Lego Batman movie. They did. They did. Right. Awesome job. They did. But like, I want like live action. You I know, know, we were going to get one and then it fell through. And oh. I know. And it was going to be Joss Whedon. Oh, no wrote, way. Awesome. Yeah. And so I was like over the moon when I was saying like, okay, the guy who created my favorite show ever is going to yes. be, you know, helming the Batgirl movie. Yes. And then, you know, stuff happened and it fell through and now it doesn't look like they're going to do it. But mm -hmm. I really want them to and I want it to be good. <laughs> like if we could just get a Batgirl movie that's in the same caliber as Wonder Woman, mm -hmm. I just like, I feel like I could die happy. Yeah, I know what you mean. So I don't know if you watch... The TV show Arrow and Flash and DC. I haven't seen them in a long time. Okay. So they have, I think they have Barbara Gordon in one of the episodes. No, no, yeah. it's Kathy Kane. It's Batwoman. Oh, it's Kathy Kane. It's Batwoman. Yeah, it's okay. There's Batgirl, Batwoman. Oh it's God. okay. Yeah, it's Kathy so, Kane. So, totally so different character. Barbara Gordon and Batgirl. <laughs> yes. Oh. The, yeah, the first Batwoman. one. There's been like first a one. few different Batgirls now, but Got she. It. No, Batwoman's getting her own TV series. That would be awesome. Is it CW doing it? It's CW. I believe they're doing it as a spinoff. So That's I'm awesome. behind on all of that. Like <laughs> I'm so behind on so many shows because the wedding and working is just oh, yeah, yeah, I totally get taken it. over. But I got to catch up on, oh, what just came out? Cobra Kai season two. I got to mm -hmm. catch up on that because okay. that just got released and I loved season one. I love the Karate Kid movies. So I'm excited for that. That'll be nice. my next finish watching, start watching thing. <laughs> well, you just got to start. <laughs> mm. I know. Tell it to my schedule. <laughs> know, right? Schedule, get it on. Get me a clone. It'll be fine. I'll have them do the work. I'll watch. You know, all for the longest time, for at least 20 years, <laughs> I've been like, I wish I had a clone. 
he could go to work and I could do all these fun things and then we can switch off. <laughs> yeah. And the end of the day, you can have a mind meld or whatever. That'd be so funny. All right. Last question. If you were a board game, what would it be? I want to say Monopoly, but like mm -hmm. that ruins friendships. So <laughs> it's just like my sister-in-law says that she will never play Monopoly with my husband and I ever again. <laughs> She played it once when we had just gotten engaged and she's like, no, I'm not playing this with you guys ever again. So we're not going to go with Monopoly. You got like five, 10 hotels on the board. Like, yeah, no. Like, like I said, when we play board games, we get competitive. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's a good question. You know, there was a Buffy board game and I have mm -hmm. it in my dining room. Ooh. I know. I know. I might just have to say I would be the Buffy board game because sometimes go. the different scenarios, <laughs> I'm not saying the Slayer always wins, but when I play, she does. So <laughs> I just, that's probably like, you, you know, maybe not the best answer. Of you playing the game. Oh my board gosh. Game. That'd be so fun. That could be fun. I feel like people would just say, man, she's really competitive. <laughs> I don't care about that, but you imagine all the Buffy fans they'll come flock to your videos that could be cool i mean i've had it let me see the game only goes through seasons one through four so i mm -hmm. think i got it honestly 20 years ago and the box is in shreds because it has gone uh -huh. with me everywhere, course, everywhere i've lived so yeah. it's like a vintage piece at this point but mm -hmm. like you have to use your smarts and you have to really be strategic with what you're doing. And there's always like new vampires cropping up and you're trying to fight them. Like I only have a steak and Willow has dynamite and but we're not playing the mayor. So we don't get as many points for that. Yeah. So it's just, you have to be, yeah, I'm going to say the Buffy game because then I get to be Buffy and you have there to be strategic go. and like, you have to think 12 steps ahead. Awesome. But you still have to take action. Ooh, mm -hmm. I like that. I like this question. This is cool. It, it is cool. Okay, everything well, relates back to Buffy. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've done a really good job of... So, okay, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, absolutely awesome TV show. Have you followed the actor... Sarah Michelle Gellar? Sarah Michelle Gellar in the different TV shows that she's been in. Absolutely. I think she's great. I like... I really liked her. I like the Scooby-Doo movies. Yes, mm -hmm. I said it. I thought those were fun. <laughs> but yeah, all of her TV shows after that, like Ringer and the Crazy Ones with Robin mm -hmm. Williams. Like I watch that. Anything she's in, I'll go see it. Yes. Yeah. So I tried to get into Ringer and the content wasn't exactly what I like to watch in, in TV shows. Mm -hmm. but I absolutely love the Crazy Ones. Yeah, the Crazy and Ones was, was really fun. Really fun TV show to watch. and. It was a lot of fun. Cool. I love it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. This was a lot of fun. I never thought about what board game I am before. So <laughs> now I guess we have our answer. We, we do. Last question. Where can my audience find you? Okay. You can find me on my website at vosuperhero.com, which is also basically all of my social media handles are yes. um, Instagram, vo superhero at twitter i'm at vo underscore superhero because somebody else took it a long time ago and i can't oh, seem man. to get it from them i know mm -hmm. i know it was active in like 2008 or something i'm like ah, oh, just give me the handle so maybe one day i can get that but yeah. i'm over there um yeah i'm on facebook at Bonnie Marie Williams, voiceover superhero. So if you just type in voiceover superhero or VO superhero, yeah. you'll find me. Because mm -hmm. I made sure nobody else had it when I got that <laughs> flash of insight. Like, no, this is my thing. Yeah. I looked and I saw nobody else had it except for that random guy on Twitter. So, mm -hmm. uh, But he didn't have a website built on it. So I took yeah. it. But <laughs> Very cool. that's where you can find me. I, I like to post lots of different fun things and mm -hmm. it's always superhero related because, mm -hmm. you know, superheroes are so pervasive because yes. we always want to see somebody doing something wonderful and see the potential that we could have for ourselves. So yeah. um, especially when, you know, things kind of feel like they're a little scary in the world, you know, that's oh, yeah. why we have superheroes that remind us that we can be better and we can do better. Exactly. Love it. On that note, just looking at your Insta and Eliza Dishku from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. 
Uh, I had a chance to chat with good friend Tom Malloy. He got to work with her in a movie. Uh, I think he was the alphabet killer. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I was like, whoa, small world. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. It was a ton of fun. Um, but I absolutely had a ton of fun talking with you, learning about your journey, your story. So many pop culture references and and the mind frequency is like in tune right now. It's, it's totally, amazing. yeah. I love it. And this um, is so much fun. Thank yeah, you. Super fun. Again, thank you so much for coming out to the podcast. I'll be sure to include the links on the show notes and people can reach you and um, check out your work on vosuperhero.com. Thank you so much, Bonnie. Yeah, thank you. This was a blast. Thank you. Have a good day. You too. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Hacks and Hobbies. You can find additional information on the guest today on the website, hacksandhobbies.com. Please feel free to subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss out on upcoming interviews with amazing guests. 